What's up mga kasama? Welcome to today's episode of Chikahan with Tito Jo. No? On July 27, 2020, Duterte will be delivering his uh, State of the Nation address for the 2020. So now, we will discuss on uh, the true State of the Nation of the Philippines with Tito Jo. Tito Jo, um, kamusta po? Uh, mabuti naman. Uh... Uh, thank you for having me uh, for this uh, round of Chikahan. Yes, this is the third episode of Chikahan. So if you would like to uh, watch more of this, please like and share this video uh, and like our page, Anak Bayan Europa. Tito, the first question to our Chikahan, ano, what is the real state of the nation? Uh, since the last time he delivered the SONA, after successfully rigging the 2019 midterm elections in order to create his super majorities in both houses of Congress, Duterte has not only maintained but raised to a new and higher level his successes or his achievements at being tyrant, traitor, mass murderer, plunderer, and as a con man. Duterte has achieved a new peak of uh, success by taking advantage of the lockdowns caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. He has been able to rechannel public funds in the hundreds of billions of pesos to himself and his cronies, bankrupted the economy and his own government, and sunk these into deeper uh, indebtedness. He has been able to railroad the enactment of his law of state terrorism and is now hell-bent on using it to silence his critics and the opposition and proceed with his scheme of making a full-blown fascist dictatorship. Duterte should celebrate his success at letting COVID-19 enter and spread in the Philippines through more than 500,000 Chinese and casino players for more than two months before providing the military solution instead of the medical solution to the contagion. He should also congratulate himself for failing to stop the contagion uh, and to uh, 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 fulfill his promises of uh, providing food and cash assistance to the millions of people whom he has locked out of their means of livelihood. Greatest success of his is blaming the people as Pasaway and making them culpable for his own ruffian or thuggish and plundering kind of rule and their own misery as his victims. Yes, Tito. Early this January, cronies of Duterte had this campaign called the Duterte Legacy, where it showed numbers and figures of the said progress under his term. Ano? For example, families, families lifted out from poverty, classrooms that have been built, roads that have been built. So what is your take on this? No amount of fake news and false numbers and figures can cover up and distract the attention and wrath of the people against the aggravation of mass unemployment and poverty and the horrendous crimes of the Duterte tyranny. It is a regime of greed and terror. It is characterized by senseless death, <clears throat> destruction, despoliation, and deception. At the rate he is going on in using state terrorism against the people and bankrupting the economy and his own regime, there is no way that Duterte can extricate himself from the damning verdict of history on his colossal crimes. The Duterte legacy is a criminal record of treason and selling out the national sovereignty and national patrimony to U.S. and Chinese imperialism, tyranny and state terrorism against the people, mass murder of 30,000 yes. poor people to make supreme the Duterte drug syndicate and flood the country with more illegal drugs, and all, all out war to preserve the oligarchy of the big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists, the biggest plunder in the quickest time to bankrupt the economy and the government, the absolution of his biggest plundering predecessors and current accomplices in corruption, the highest priority given to military overspending and corruption at the expense of public health, 
education and other social services and the proven falsity of promises of being left and socialist, bringing about peace, ending endo, and improving the lot of the workers, land reform, and independent foreign policy. Tito, also I know for sure we will also be hearing a lot from Duterte in his State of the Nation address about the Revolutionary Communist Party of the Philippines and the National Democratic Front of the Philippines and the New People's Army. So why do you think Duterte is putting all of the of all of the blame on this group instead of uh, focusing on solving the COVID-19 crisis or providing social care? The more Duterte attacks the revolutionary forces of the people, the CPP, NPA, and NDFP, the more he unwittingly stresses the justness of the revolutionary cause of the people's struggle for national and social liberation, and the more he exposes the traitorous, tyrannical, murderous, plundering, and deceptive character of his counter-revolutionary regime, Duterte yes. keeps on attacking the revolutionary forces and labeling them as terrorists in order to rationalize his policy and law of state terrorism against all social activists, critics, and opposition to his regime. He's using red tagging to silence the just demands, criticisms, and opposition. He's hell-bent on using the law of state terrorism yes. to arrest, torture, murder, and dispossess all the people he considers as opposed to his regime. Tito, with this, what uh, can the Filipino activist here in Europe do to help the Kasamas in the Philippines? The Filipino activists should do everything within their individual and organized capabilities to expose the crimes of the Duterte regime, express yes. support for the Filipino people in the motherland to oust this evil regime, send any possible moral and concrete support to the people most in need through partner organizations in the Philippines and seek the widest possible support from host peoples and migrants from other countries. It is not too difficult to further expand the support of overseas Filipinos and further gain international support because the Duterte regime has become notorious for the mass murder of poor people and other grave human rights violations. In fact, complaints have been submitted to the International Criminal, International yes. Criminal yeah. Court for investigation of the regime for human rights violations and crimes against humanity. Yes, um, in, in Europe, no, Tito, it is very easy to get caught up in many petty bourgeois comforts. What can we do to stay connected with the struggle in the Philippines and help our Kasamas? Overseas Filipinos work uh, hard to earn their subsistence and save some amount to help their close relatives in the Philippines. They do not have much time and means to enjoy the high standard of living in Europe. It is the duty and task of the organized social activists to arouse, organize, and mobilize their compatriots. Arousing means learning the conditions and need of compatriots abroad, and then informing and educating them about the Philippine situation and why they have been compelled to seek jobs abroad through meetings, publications, audiovisuals, and cultural activities that are both enlightening and entertaining. Organizing means recruiting more members for the various types of patriotic and democratic Filipino organizations at the level of countries, cities, and even neighborhoods. Mobilizing means holding campaigns and activities that uphold and promote the rights and interests of the overseas Filipinos and their relatives and friends in the Philippines. Um, Tito, how do the youth and migrant struggle align with the overall struggle? Except for the very few Filipinos who are on scholarship grants or who are children of wealthy families who are well paid or who are well paid as professionals, company executives or diplomatic officials, the Filipino youth are themselves migrant workers or belong to migrant worker families who work hard for their subsistence and small savings. On the basis of class affinity, the youth and the migrant workers can be easily aligned in their struggle. Even the few Filipinos who are better off than the rest of the overseas Filipinos can be approached and won over 
on the basis of patriotism and enlightened concern for the suffering of the Filipino people in an unjust ruling system and under a regime as evil as the tyrannical uh, Duterte regime. All right, Tito, do you think Duterte has ever done good with his term? The crimes of Duterte against the entire Filipino people are so grave that these are unpardonable yeah. and far outweigh any claim that he has done any good in whatever regard. It is a matter of fact that the worst of criminals can be terribly unkind to other people, but can also be kind to their own families or girlfriends, their criminal accomplices, cronies, and pet animals. But such kindness cannot upset the, gravest, the, the grave crimes. Before in the early weeks of his presidency, Duterte pretended to be a left and socialist friend of yes, the revolutionary actually. movement and that he wanted peace, but he was making a pretense and doing an act of deception. He released a few political prisoners only to put aside his promise to release all political prisoners. And then he ordered the arrest of the few released political prisoners when he could not make the NDFP capitulate in the peace negotiations. He appointed a few progressives to his cabinet and he had them kicked out by his agents in Congress when he could not obtain the capitulation of the revolutionary movement. Duterte can be a deceptive enemy as well as a bare-faced monster. Yes, Tito. If Duterte um, gets ousted, ano, what actions can we take to ensure that uh, systematic change, like with Marcos Ouster and Cory Aquino, who ended up still serving the ruling classes, no? how do we ensure that the same thing does not happen with Duterte and whoever succeeds him? The Duterte tyranny can be ousted from power by a yes. broad to a united front of anti-fascist forces just like the Marcos fascist dictatorship was overthrown in 1986. It would be better to have a president who follows the 1987 constitution and assume the presidency as constitutional successor than a proven tyrant who is now in a hurry to constitutionalize and legalize yeah. what is unconstitutional and illegal in Duterte's law of state terrorism and impose a full-blown fascist dictatorship on the people. As in 1986, the revolutionary movement, or the NPA in particular, does not yet have the regular mobile forces in the form of army battalions and divisions to seize political power in Manila and other cities and overthrow the Duterte regime and entire ruling system. Thus, the quickest possible ouster of Duterte is through a combination of gigantic mass actions and the withdrawal of support from him by the anti-Duterte forces within the reactionary armed forces, as in 1986. It is still better to have a regime that tries to respect civil and political rights than a regime that is blatantly traitorous, tyrannical, murderous, plundering, and deceptive. It is never a good choice to perpetuate uh, in power a fascist dictator or tyrant like Marcos or Duterte just because it is not yet possible for the NPA to knock out or compel the surrender of enemy forces in Manila. The anti-fascist struggle in unity with the entire people will serve to strengthen the revolutionary movement, but will not yet bring about the regular mobile forces to take the lead in seizing political power from all the reactionaries. So long as the NPA does not yet have the regular mobile forces to knock out the strategic, political, and military holdouts of the ruling system, the revolutionary movement keeps on building the people's democratic government in the countryside. In an all-round way, all revolutionary forces are strengthening themselves nationwide, while the semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system rots with the alternation of fascist and pseudo-democratic regimes because of the ever-worsening crisis and internal contradictions among the rival factions of the reactionary classes. The way to total victory of the People's Democratic Revolution is to keep on building the strength and alliance of the workers and peasants, winning over the middle forces and taking advantage of the splits among the reactionaries. 
in case the Duterte regime and its successors manage to perpetuate themselves in power, the people will continue to suffer escalating conditions of oppression and exploitation and will tend to rely on the armed revolution for the overthrow not only the, of the fascist regime, but also the entire rotten ruling system. Tito, how can the anti-terror law can pave the way that for Duterte's term extension and or charter change? No? So what can we do to expose and stop this? Duterte can use his law of state terrorism to silence or neutralize all opposition to it and to ensure that his supermajority in the Supreme Court will declare it as constitutional and lawful. It is difficult and unwise to depend completely on the Supreme Court uh, because most justices are appointees of the Duterte gang and has been used to dismiss all the plunder cases against the big plunderers allied to Duterte. They are corrupt like most members of Congress. But uh, it is not an, uh, a futile and useless act for uh, all the respected uh, uh, constitutional experts and uh, uh, organizations filing petitions against the uh, so-called anti-terrorism act. Uh, because that is to be done in order to uh, uh, to expose how bad the entire ruling system is. And uh, uh, you can never tell if uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, Supreme Court would decide in favor of the petitions because uh, the provisions of uh, the so-called Anti-Terrorism Act are so uh, atrociously, grossly unconstitutional. Um, but Duterte, without having to wait for a Supreme Court uh, decision in his favor, uh, uh, he can, Duterte can move fast enough to constitutionalize and legalize what is unconstitutional and illegal in the state terrorism law under the 1987 constitution. He can railroad charter chains yes. and, yeah. and rig uh, the plebiscite for its ratification to render moot and academic. The petitions filed by the most respected constitutional experts against the state terrorism law. The charter amendments have been cooked in advance, mostly in secrecy, and there is now a campaign to drum up the semblance of support for charter change from the local officials under the manipulation of the Department of Interior and Local Government uh, 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 Secretary General Año, who is a key figure in the civilian military junta that Duterte has already created in the form of National Task Force, ELCAP, and the Anti-Terrorism Council. Yes, Tito, that's right. So um, the Duterte administration is pu uh, pushing for pal parliamentarism. No? Can this be a window of opportunity for a genuine change or will it be uh, a more concentration of power? Marcos used the pretext of opting for parliamentarism as a pretext for charter change in order to pave the way for autocratic transitory provisions which allowed him to take executive actions to impose fascist dictatorship on the people. Duterte is using the same pretext of parliamentarism in connection with federalism. The real purpose of charter chains under Duterte is to centralize power in the hands of a fascist dictator instead of decentralizing it to the federated states and parliamentarism can be nothing more than a talking shop yes. among political agents of the fascist dictator, like the interim Batasang Pambansa of Marcos. Yes, Tito. Um, it has been it has been a pleasure, no, Tito, to have another episode of Chikahan with you. Do you have a message to our view, uh, viewers before we go? I uh, thank you, Angelo, and all our listeners for participating in this web webinar. Yes, <clears throat> I hope that this. Uh, a webinar has served to clarify issues concerning the Philippines and the Filipino people and to encourage them to do whatever they can to enable and support the Filipino people to fight and win in the struggle for national liberation and democracy. In the days and months to come, you must watch closely the developments in the Philippines and join the campaigns and activities launched by Anakbayan Europa Migrante Europe and other patriotic and democratic organizations of Filipinos in Europe. Yes. Mabuhay kayo! 
Mabuhay tayong lahat. Mabuhay ang sabayan ng Pilipino. Yes, Tito. Thank you so much for um, um, being with you. No, um, this is the Chikahan with Tito Jo, the Sona edition. No, so if you have to, uh, if you want to have more of this, just please like and share this video so we could support, so you could give us a support and we could continue this uh, Chikahan episodes with Tito Jo. Um, to everyone, to our audience, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it has been a pleasure with you. This is Kasamang Christ with Tito Jo. Mapagpalayang gabi po para sa ating lahat. Mm -hmm.